Welcome to KJV Home Bible Study from the Man Cave. This is JC Ligar with Chloe Ligar, and we're going to continue with the Gospel of Matthew. This will be part 34. But Chloe Ligar, before I do anything, what do I need to do? Pray. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you, Lord, for this day that we can study your word. I pray the Holy Spirit would fill me right now and help me to teach it in a way that is clear and understandable and everybody can be blessed. Pray it in the name of Jesus and everybody said, Amen. Amen. All right, let's do this. We are in Matthew 6, 19 through 23. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust does corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust does corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. All right. So Jesus made a very interesting statement once. He said, What shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world but lose his soul? Think about that. A human soul is more valuable than all the kingdoms and treasures on this earth because no matter how much riches you have once you die you leave it all behind one thing you never see behind the casket is a u-haul you're gonna have your relatives fighting over all your possessions and that's it whatever you had on the earth you leave behind but Jesus wants us to lay up treasure in heaven so when I read that it made me think of one of the times a rich young ruler came to Jesus let's look in Matthew 19 verse 16 and behold one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Stop right there. Is eternal life a paycheck or is it a gift? See, according to this guy, he wants to know what he has to do to earn eternal life. You can't. Eternal life is a gift from God. No matter what you offer God, it would never be enough to pay for eternal life. So it's either a gift or it doesn't come to you. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt be enter into life keep the commandments and he said unto him which jesus said thou shalt do no murder thou shalt not commit adultery thou shalt not steal thou shalt not bear false witness honor thy father and thy mother and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself the young man saith unto him, All these have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? Stop right there. 
that kid is deceived if he thinks he has kept the commandments. Again, the ninth commandment is, do not bear false witness. Have you ever told a lie? Yeah, we all have. So what does that make us? It makes us a liar. And the Bible teaches all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. This kid says he's never committed adultery. But again, remember, Jesus said, if you even look upon a woman to lust after her, you've committed adultery with her in your heart. And we're going to even look at that verse a little later on. So again, this kid is deceived. But Jesus is really going to go for the jugular here. Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. So, according to Jesus, the way we get treasure in heaven, excuse me, <clears throat> is by sharing our riches with those who have nothing. So, there are five crowns you can win in heaven. So, crowns and heavenly treasure are two different things. The, one of the crowns is the crown of life for those who give their life for the gospel. One is the shepherd's crown for those who share the word of God as a pastor, a teacher, or, you know, somebody who just teaches the word of God and they have a flock. Even children's ministry, what a beautiful blessing that is to have the little ones paying attention to you and you share the word of God with them. You get a crown for that. There's the crown of righteousness for those who love his appearing. And again, if you're excited that Jesus is coming back, it's obviously because you're living a godly life. If you're not, you don't want Jesus to come back. You're like, not yet, Lord. There's the crown of rejoicing for soul winners and the incorruptible crown for those who beat their body into subjection. Because as a Christian, I can commit every sin an unbeliever can commit but when I say you know what I'm gonna keep my body and live a godly pure life when I fail I get up I confess my sin and I go on but that is a walk with God that a godly person does see if you're not saved you can care less about a walk with God and you you know you drink iniquity in like water but when you're born again and you want to please God you are going against the current and you're going upstream trying to deny the sinful pleasures of the flesh and you want to honor God so God knows that and he'll reward you for that but again when it comes to treasure in heaven according to that verse give money to the poor you know because Jesus said if you give food to somebody it's like you're feeding him if you give a drink to somebody it's like you're giving him a drink if you're giving clothes to the poor it's like you're putting clothes on Jesus and he said whenever you do this to the least of these you do it unto me but if you want your treasure here on earth well let's look real quick in Proverb 13 what it says in Proverbs 13, 7, There is that maketh himself rich, yet has nothing. Because again, I could have billions of dollars, but when I die, I leave it all behind. And there is that maketh himself poor, yet has great riches. Again, if you're sharing your wealth with the poor, and they're not able to you know, give anything to you because they got nothing. God sees that and he's going to reward you in heaven. Let's see, Proverb 23. 
labor not, I'm sorry, 23, verse 4 and 5. Labor not to be rich. Cease from thine own wisdom. Will thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle towards heaven. So again, you're, all you're doing is you're trying to save money. But them darn bills keep a coming. And you're paying your bills, you're paying your rent, you're buying groceries, and you look at your bank account and you're like, what the heck, man? I just had a whole bunch, I just got paid yesterday and I'm broke today. Uh. All right, and let's look at James. All right. In James 5, 1. Go to now, you rich man. Weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth. And the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth, and been wanton. Ye have nourished your hearts as in the day of slaughter. Ye have condemned and killed the just, and he does not resist you. So that makes me think of guys like George Soros, who they got so much money that they can do anything they want and they use that money to do all kinds of evil in the world one day they're gonna die and they're gonna stand before jesus in judgment and all that will burn with them in hell so very sad all right the light of the body is the eye if therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee it be darkness, how great is that darkness. So when I look at that verse, all I can think about is pornography. When, as a Christian, you put on pornography and you let that crap come into your eyes, it goes right into your heart and into your soul. And you are in bondage. I started watching porn when I was 13 years old. And from that moment, it gripped me. And you know, you got days where, oh, I want to fight this, I hate this. And then other days where you're so callous and cold-hearted that you watch that and you're like, I don't care, I'm giving myself over to that. That's something you need to pray to the Lord. And I'm not just saying, oh, Lord, I, I confess, and you still have your stash under your bed. You know, but nowadays it's even worse. You don't even need a stash under your bed. You just click on, you know, your thing. You go on the internet and boom, it's right there on your TV. I mean, Satan really, I mean, does anybody give anything for free? You have free pornography being pumped into your TV. Talk about satanic. Because the devil knows... That, that is going to be how you're going to defeat the Christians. The Christians are going to be 
watching this stuff, and then you come at them with everything you got, you condemn them, and next thing you know, they don't want to go to church, they don't want to read their Bible, they don't want to pray, they feel like failures. And again, God commands us to repent, to forsake our sin, and let's look at a few verses that deal with this. Let's see what godly people do in the Bible. Alright, Job. Job said in Job 31, verse 1, I made a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I think upon a maid? So before you commit adultery in the flesh, you commit adultery of the mind. You're looking with lust, you're imagining yourself doing all these things, and the temptation is burning in your heart. Job had a wife, which is kind of ironic, because Lucifer brought a whirlwind, killed all the kids, but left a wife. But Job says, why am I going to lust after one of my maids when I have a wife? So, anyway... Let's keep a looking. Let's see what David has to say here. 101 verse 3. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. So again, giving in to this stuff is a choice. Nobody can say, oh, I couldn't help myself. I, I was forced to do this against my will. Yeah, right. We all have a choice whether we're going to sin or whether we're going to walk in righteousness. And again, I get it. I'm a man. I struggle with lust too. I work at Walmart. I got women walking right by me showing everything. It's like they got these yoga pants now where it leaves nothing to the imagination. You got to force yourself. I'm not going to look. It's like, oh my gosh, why are you even bother wearing clothes? You look butt naked. But I digress. And again, let's look at what Matthew has to say on the struggle is real. You have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. And our last verse, let's go to John. And again, let's read the verse again, because it'll make sense here. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. With that in mind, let's look at John 3.19. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and man loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. So again, when it comes to sin and pornography, it's a choice. You can't say, I'm being forced to do this against my will. Nope. Jesus even said, if your eye offends you, pluck it out and cast it far from you. If your hand offends you, cut it off 
cast it far from you. If your foot offends you, cut it off. He's not being literal. But if there are things in your life, like a TV, that cause you to sin, get rid of it. I know what I'm saying. It's like, are you kidding me? My TV? If there's things like a phone that causes you to sin, chuck your phone. And you're like, are you out of your mind? If there are things like computers that you're able to watch stuff on, if it's something that causes you to sin, if you really want to get the victory and be right with God, if you feel like, oh, I, I can't help but do this, get rid of it. And I'm telling you, your flesh is going to fight you all the way because your flesh loves to sin, even as a Christian. Yeah, I'm able to be honest with you. There are days where I sin and I'm like, oh my gosh, how did that happen? It just came out of nowhere. There are days when I got transgression where I'm playing games and I'm like, well, I know God says I shouldn't do that, but what if I do this? Is this okay? Can I get away with that? And then there are iniquity where I sin on purpose. And I say, you know what? I know the Holy Spirit is convicting me, but blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to listen. I'm going to fulfill the lust of my flesh. And I do, and after, I'm miserable. My fellowship with God, severed. And I'm like, oh man, I can't believe I'm doing that. And I'm in bondage. And what does God want me to do? Repent, confess, forsake, get right with Him. And He is happy to reunite in fellowship with us. Thank God for His mercy because, oh my gosh, there was a time when Peter asked the Lord, Lord, how many times must I forgive my brother when he sinned against me? Up to seven times? Jesus said, not seven times, but 70 times seven. That's a lot of time for you to sin. Because if God is going to say that to a human, to Peter, I expect you to forgive that often. He himself will also forgive us that often, and even infinitely more. But we don't want to use the grace of God as a license to sin, because God knows our thoughts and our motives, and our God is a God who doesn't have an issue with taking us to the woodshed and spanking his kids when they get out of line. And a hoy. Getting spanked by God hoits. Ouch. So spare yourself that kind of a spanking. This is JC Ligar with Chloe Ligar. I hope this was a blessing to you. I'll see you next time. God bless you one and all. Bye-bye.